this lesson is about mixed numbers. We've learned about different kind of numbers in class. We've learned about whole numbers, and we know that whole numbers tell us there's the whole thing. So if I saw the whole number five, I would know that I have five whole things. We've learned about fractions. What we've learned about fractions is that it's made up of two numbers, one on top of the other. The number on the top is called the numerator, and it tells me how many I'm talking about. The number on the bottom is my denominator, and it tells me how many equal sized pieces I need to make one whole. Well, sometimes you're gonna see the whole number and the fraction put together, and this is called a mixed number. I have the whole number two, and I have the fraction one half. <clears throat> so, a mixed number is both a whole number and a fraction written together. Now, I want you to pay special attention to how it's written. You'll see my whole number here in this example, one and one half. My whole number is nice and tall on my paper, and one half is my fraction that's the same height as my whole number, so it makes it easier to read. So this is one and one half. It tells me I have one whole and a half of another. So let's say I had company come over for pizza. When everybody leaves, I look in the boxes and I can say that, look, I have one whole pizza here that nobody ate and I have half of another pizza. So I have one and a half pizzas that I get to eat. Two and a third tells me I have two holes and one-third a part of another whole and we know that it's going to be in threes and I need two more to make the whole so this is just a part of one. Three and one-fourth my whole number is three my fraction is one-fourth so I have three whole pieces of something and just one-fourth of a piece of the rest of one. Now, mixed numbers can be written differently. And let's look at how we can write these in a different way, but know that they mean the same thing. One and one half, well that tells me I have one whole, and I have half of another piece. It can also be written as three halves. Three over two as a fraction. So one and one half, this is my mixed number, and three over two, three halves, that's my fraction, but it has a special name. This fraction is called an improper fraction. I-M-P-R-O-P-E-R, -E proper fraction. An improper fraction is one in which the numerator is larger than the denominator. The numerator's on top, the denominator's on the bottom, and here I can see three halves if I write it over here, bigger, I can see that my numerator is a three, my denominator is a two, so my numerator is bigger or larger than my denominator, so this makes this fraction improper. So how can it be that a mixed number is equal to an improper fraction? Here's my mixed number, I have a whole number and my fraction, my whole number is two, my fraction is one fourth, and my improper fraction, my numerator nine, is much bigger than my denominator four. Well, let's break it down and see if it makes sense. If I have two and one fourth pizzas, we like pizzas, after the party I look and I see I have this whole pizza, I have this whole pizza, and I have this part of a pizza. Well, what if I went in and divided my pizzas like this, so that they're all divided into fourths? Well, here's a fourth, there's a fourth, there's a fourth, there's a fourth. Four fourths equals one, because remember, if my numerator and my denominator are the same, it's going to equal to one. Well, here's another one. One, two, three, four. Use your imagination. They're equal size, equal shape. Um, and there's one, 
There's one, there's one, there's one. These are all fourths in here. And we know that if I have four fourths, I have one. So I have one here and one here. Well, that takes care of my whole number too. And then I have just this piece left, and it's just this corner of the circle. So we know that that's one fourth also. So we, here we have the one plus one is two, and this one fourth that's left over. So there's my mixed number, two and one fourth. Well, how can it be nine fourths? Well, let's look. If I go and I look at my pizzas, and in every box I have this fourth, I can put them all together, and you'll see here there's a fourth, there's a fourth, there's a fourth, and there's a fourth. How many fourths does it take to equal one? Four fourths. So that would equal the same as one whole pizza back over here. Over here I put all my pieces together. And again I have one, two, three, four fourths. And we know that four fourths equals one. So that takes care of two, just like back over here. And then I have this one little piece left. So again, I have the one plus the one equals two with my one fourth left over. So here we see that two and a fourth is equal to nine fourths. Here are some problems that I want you to try at home and bring them in tomorrow with your questions about how to do this. I want you to look at two and two thirds. That's my mixed numeral. How many thirds is that going to be? Four and one half. Mixed number. This is going to be an improper fraction. My numerator is going to be bigger than my denominator. One and three-fourths equals how many fourths? Again, this will be an improper fraction. I've got my mixed number here. How many fourths is this? And here, two and four-fifths equals how many fifths? This is my mixed number. This will be an improper fraction. So I want you to break it down and draw pictures like I did and come in tomorrow with your list of questions and let's see how you did.